Okay. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to this webinar uh, where we will discuss the UAE corporate tax announcement. My name is Sameh. I'm a senior business development executive in the Omar Kwain Free Trade Zone Authority. Uh, the UAQFTZ offers a great working environment in the perfect location at very affordable rates where you can both work and live. We extend our warm welcome to share our success by establishing a company in the UAQ FTZ and enjoy the highest quality of services and incentives. The UAQ FTZ is the free zone of the future where progressive companies, regardless of the sector in which they operate, can enjoy doing business in a safe, secure and prosperous environment. Situated close to the UAE's primary seaports and within 40 minutes drive from Dubai International Airport and Sharjah International Airport, UAQ FTZ is the perfect location to set up any business within easy access to the rest of the world. The UAQ FTZ offers flexibility and ease of doing business, customer-friendly approach, investor-friendly climate, excellent growth opportunities, cost-effective leasing options for office space and warehousing. MCA was established in the year 2009 and today ranks amongst the reputed professional services firms providing multidisciplinary services in audit, assurance, taxation, corporate services, uh, corporate finance, strategy, accounting and CFO services, transformative technologies and asset management solutions. Now back to our topic about the upcoming UAE corporate tax announcement in January 2022. The UAE Ministry of Finance has released a document for public consultation. This document gives a broad outline of the UAE corporate tax, which is expected to be effective from June 2023. <laughs> The UAQ FTZ, in coordination with MCA, is presenting this informative webinar that highlights the key learnings from the public consultation document. Today, our guest is Mr. Girish Chand, senior partner in MCA Gulf. He will shed the light on the latest announcement of the UAE corporate tax and the effects of that on the UAE business climate. Welcome, Mr. Girish. Thank you so much, Sam. Uh, it's always a pleasure to uh, work with Umal Queen Free Zone. I remember last time, basically, we also coordinated uh, with the Umal Queen Free Zone during the VAT implementation. Mm -hmm. There is an echo, Sam, maybe. Uh, just... Yeah, so we had uh, basically, uh, you know, kind of coordinated with Umalkan Free Zone during the VAT implementation. This was back in 2018, and it's always a pleasure to reassociate with the Umalkan Free Zone. Uh, like you mentioned, uh, the latest development of corporate tax is a significant development as far as the compliance sphere in the UAE is concerned, okay? And it is of uh, greater significance for clients uh, which are in the Free Zone right uh, because the now uh, unlike what <clears throat> which is primarily not you know impacting the profit line of the company uh, corporate tax is something which will impact the bottom line and uh, the all the entities uh, need to be aware of what are the legislation and what is the impact on their bottom line okay so if you permit i will share my screen and then start the presentation. Sam, I guess the screen is uh, visible. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, maybe you can switch off. Yeah, thank you. So our presentation uh, today uh, primarily uh, is with reference to the uh, public consultation document, which FTA has released. Before that, in January, 
uh, they had done the announcement of the corporate tax, which provided a brief outline of how the corporate tax was is going to be implemented in the UAE. The public consultation document provides further clarity. Okay, what I would say is that possibly now we have about a 30 to 40 percent clarity in terms of how the corporate tax is likely to be applied uh, effective uh, June 2023. So today's uh, presentation is primarily covering uh, four topics. The first topic is the corporate tax basics uh, and uh, people who are already familiar, please pardon me, but uh, this is the interest of the larger audience. So we'll cover the basics of the corporate tax which is applicable. Uh, we will dwell into the details as far as the corporate tax uh, public consultation document, what are the additional clarity that is offered. Uh, subsequently, of course, the specifics in terms of the free zone taxability, which is the, you know, basically the area of interest uh, where we can see large number of participants have joined in. Uh, so that is something which we'll cover. Uh, we will then dwell about uh, how to prepare for the corporate tax. And in the end, there would be the uh, Q&A. Uh, just for the audience, uh, in case if you have any questions, uh, please put it on the Q&A panel so that we can take up the questions at the end of the channel, okay? Uh, just I think there is always a thing that people tend to put on the chat. Uh, we prefer you put on the Q&A so that we don't miss your question and we'll try to answer at the end of the session. Okay, so let's get into the uh, basics of corporate tax, okay? So when you look at corporate tax is primarily a direct tax which is applied on the net income. So as I mentioned that, you know, this is something which will impact the bottom line of the company. Okay, now uh, why is it being introduced? Obviously, uh, as usual, the, the, of course, one of the, you know, one of the conditions is that uh, primarily this would help uh, UAE in terms of accelerating its development and transformation from a strategic objective. So besides that also, you know, the uh, what would happen is that uh, the UAE would also be meeting the international standards for tax transparency and preventing the harmful tax practices. As you know, the OECD has been very active in times in terms of promoting, you know, the uh, basically the tax regimes across the region and there are some impending uh, guidelines which are coming up in 23 and 24, uh, which would basically is a natural corollary why UAE has introduced uh, corporate tax, because effectively as per those guidelines, right, uh, what would have happened is that jurisdictions which do not have taxation, you know, uh, the entities which are based here and if they have a parent entity based abroad, so the basically the parent entity jurisdiction would have a right to tax on for example, UAE, if it did not introduce uh, corporate tax. So there has been that kind of compression. And of course, this also helps the uh, UAE uh, federal government. I think this is a common question as to, uh, you know, when you look at corporate tax, how is it uh, different from VAT? Okay. Now, uh, as far as VAT is concerned, normally it would be a case where it would have no impact on the business unless you know you are basically dealing with exempt supplies or there is inefficiency in terms of you know claiming your input vat as such yeah so those are the conditions where vat would have an impact on the bottom line okay however in case of the corporate tax it's basically on your net profit so definitely on whatever you are earning you would be expected to pay cor corporate tax and that's where it would basically tend to have the impact on the company's bottom line. Okay, so this is a common question when we talk about the effective from, what is the implication of this effective from? Okay, so now the, the corporate tax is effective for financial year starting on or after 1st June 2023, right? So it is not that for everyone it will start on, on or after 1st June 2023. It depends on the financial year of the organization. So we have examples here. Suppose if the financial year is 1st Jan to 31st of December, in that case, the corporate tax would apply for that entity from 1st January 2024. 
let's take another example, which is very common in possibly the subcontinent is the financial year of 1st April to 31st March as such. For such entities, the effective year will be from 1st April 2024 onwards. A very common corollary is there. Okay, fine. If that is the case, should I basically change my financial year to kind of defer the impact of corporate tax? Okay, at least our advice would be until the legislations are out and you know there is clarity around the transitional provisions. Okay, that's something that we should not really look at. Okay, coming to the rates, uh, as far as the corporate tax is concerned. So we basically have 0% uh, up to a taxable income of 375,000. In case of a taxable income above 375,000, 9% will apply, okay? Now there is also a proviso where basically it's talking about for large multinationals, the rate could be higher than 9%. And this is again coming from the reference to pillar two of the OECD uh, BEPS. Right, uh, primarily uh, where you know entities which have global consolidated revenue exceeding Euro 750 million, those are possibly likely to be subject to an higher rate of tax on their operations in UAE. So let's take an example of how this will work. So if we say that the net taxable income is you know 500,000 dirhams, in that case for the first 375,000, 0% will apply, right? The amount between 500 and 375, which is 125,000, on that difference, there would be a 9% tax applicability. So for the entity, you know, where the income is 500,000, the tax payable will be 11,250. Okay, we'll move on to the public consultation document. Right, in the public consultation document, I will first talk about the basic concepts that are there because these become the key uh, kind of, you know, basically the foundations on which the corporate tax is based. Okay, so first is about the persons. So when we refer to taxable persons in the public consultation document, they have spoken about natural persons. Okay, natural persons are primarily individuals, okay? So if the uh, persons are in, engaged in business or commercial activity, they would be subject to corporate tax. So this would be whether sole establishments or proprietorship or individual partners in an unincorporated partnership, okay? And uh, primarily uh, the main condition is also that you the basically the activity would require a commercial license. If there is a requirement of a commercial license for an individual to perform the activity, then that particular activity would be subject to corporate tax. Now, what is out of scope? So when you talk about an employment income or any other personal income that we earn, whether from dividend shares as individuals, right, including rentals, they would not be subject to corporate tax. Okay, and they have also included the UAE real estate and other investments which are held to a private or family trust. So primarily, if these are activities which are not requiring a commercial license, then in that context, they would not be subject to uh, corporate tax. However, if there is a freelancer and who needs a license to perform his activity, in that case, that particular freelancer would be subject to corporate tax. The second element is legal persons, which we talk about, you know, registered entities, okay? And this will be basically including, you know, limited liability companies, private shareholdings, public joint stock, and other entities which are established within the laws of UAE. And even in case of foreign legal entities, if they have a permanent establishment, they are also liable for corporate tax for the income which is generated within UAE. Now, in terms of basically the exemption is the governments, only on government companies which are carrying out sovereign and mandated activities, okay? Um, entities which are in, engaged in the extraction and exploitation of the UA natural resources, okay? And which are subject to emirates level taxation. Charities and all which are listed in a cabinet decision, not any charity as such, okay? Public and regulated private social security and retirement pension funds and investment funds. So these are the category of exempt persons. 
right so as we can see is that uh, primarily all kinds of entities are subject to corporate tax okay and like i mentioned individuals if they do not require license then that particular income is not subject to corporate tax okay and the permanent establishments would come under the domain so any foreign entity which has got a permanent establishment that will come under the domain of corporate tax in the further slide we'll see what kind of permanent establishments come under this domain now the second concept is about tax residency so where are you resident as far as from a tax perspective okay so basically when we talk about residency if uh, a legal person or a company is incorporated in the uae right that would be considered as tax resident in uae okay any other natural person who is engaged in a business or commercial activity right in their own or in the uncorporated partnership they would be considered resident and foreign companies now what is the implication of this residency okay primarily what would happen is that if you are a uae resident person you will be taxed in uae on the worldwide income okay whereas if you are a natural person you will be taxed in terms of the income one from the business activity carried out in uh, uae so what effectively it means that in case of entities or companies you would be taxed on your global income right whereas if you are individuals you would be basically taxed on income which is generated within the uae now in case of non residents what happens so non residents are also subject to uae corporate tax okay basically from the income generated from the permanent establishment and income which is sourced in uae right and for the permanent establishment the concept is used the oecd model tax convention model is used as far as what is the definition of permanent establishments and the normally they would come under the two test whether you are basically having a fixed place of business in the uae or the other part of it is whether there is an agent who is effectively acting on behalf of the principal so in that context also the uh, basically it will trigger of the permanent establishment uh, concept and make the foreign entity liable for ue corporate tax okay so now although we we'll say that ue residents are liable for global income there are certain incomes which are exempt from the corporate tax and these are some of the kind of uh, you know i would say that it has been a soft introduction as far as corporate tax is concerned by these uh, kind of exemptions which are provided so in case of dividends which are paid to foreign companies and capital gains on the sale of shares both of within uae and out foreign companies those are exempt from the corporate tax for you know uae residents who are liable for global income okay but this is with the proviso that the uae company must hold at least 5% of the subsidiary company shares which is presumably outside or within the uae and the foreign company must be in a tax jurisdiction where 9% tax rate is applicable so one is the holding structure is what is being spoken about a minimum 5% holding second is that it should be subject to tax in the foreign jurisdiction so these are the primary thing and there is one more exempt kind of income which is very restrictive or very specific where we talk about you know from operating or leasing aircraft or ship is used in international transportation so this is basically we this is more in reference to the airlines as such okay so basically i think these points that we talk about comments have already covered okay now when we come to expense deduction like we have seen in the vat regime okay so there are certain kind of expenses which are as if they are disallowed in context of the vat similarly there are certain expenses which are disallowed in context of the uh, you know corporate tax and there are certain expenses which are subject to limits okay for example if you take the interest expenses then there is a cap of 30% on ebitda which is earnings before interest tax depreciation and amortization okay maybe in terms of the financial services industry like banks and all there is an higher rate of interest which is allowed okay of course also there is the element of when you talk about related party borrowings then there is the element of possibly also considering whether these are at arms length basis which means that you know you, whatever the interest rates that are being specified are what would be applicable in the market 
Now, mainland payments, which are basically made to the free zone, which is taxed at 0%, these are not deductible, okay? Basically, as such, unless they fall into the free zone, 0% eligibility. We talk about this in little more detail when we talk about the uh, free zone, uh, you know, kind of, you know, free zone related slides. We'll talk these in more detail. Now, unlike VAT, where, you know, when we talk about entertainment for customers, shareholders and all were not allowed, in the corporate tax, uh, you know, regime, we, they are talking about a 50% allowance of such expenditure, right? And as in VAT, uh, you know, when you talk about penalties or any kind of levies uh, and the donations paid to unapproved charity, these would not be allowed to be deducted as an expense when you talk of the corporate tax calculations. Okay, the free zone bit of it, we will talk about a uh, little more in detail. The other concept is about a loss treatment because one of the fundamental concepts which the UAE context they have used is that if there are loss, that corporate tax is basically to be paid on the total profit of a business over its entire life cycle, right? So what it also allows is that if there are losses, you are allowed to carry forward the losses and recover it against the profit in the subsequent uh, periods. Of course, with certain conditions, we'll look at the details now. So losses can, like I mentioned, losses can be covered, carried forward indefinitely, okay? Of course, the provisions are that the, the same shareholders hold 50% of the shareholding from the start of the loss till the end of the period where the loss is fully set up. Or the other element is that the same business is being carried out, okay, in case the shareholding reduces below 50%. Okay, this, this would not apply to listed entities. And the there is a restriction on the amount of losses that you can basically set off in a particular financial year. This is limited to the extent of, 50, sorry, 75% of the taxable income in that particular financial year. Now, when you talk about the loss relief, uh, it is not applicable in certain circumstances. One is losses which are incurred prior to the effective date of corporate tax. Okay, uh, losses which are incurred by a person prior to him become registering for corporate tax. Okay, losses which are incurred from activity or assets with generated income that is exempt from corporate tax, which means that if they, the income is exempt from corporate tax in one particular day, then you can't set off the losses uh, from those kind of activities subsequently. Similarly, where if the losses are incurred by a free zone person, okay, uh, now, and if it is not attributable to a P in the mainland, which means because there is the element, again, when we talk about the free zone and mainlands, there is one element where, you know, it allows for the branches, uh, if it is in mainland, those to be taxed at 9%. Now, within the UAE corporate tax, I think this is something which is possibly a little unique where they've allowed for loss transfers between group entities, okay? And this is an interesting twist because we are not talking of a tax group, but we are allowing, we are talking about set off of losses of one group entity with the other uh, group entities. It remains to see how they, how the, you know, the operational elements are formed out for this, but it's an interesting concept. Okay, but this is allowed in cases where the parent company holds 75% or more of shareholding or voting rights. Okay, and this loss transfer is not allowed with exempt entities or free zone entities with 0% corporate tax. And again, there is the threshold limit in terms of these kind of loss transfers to the 75% of the entity uh, which is making profit. So that threshold limit is also kind of specified. Okay, now we talk about the concept of tax group and uh, tax credit, right? So similar to uh, VAT, there is a concept of tax group in corporate tax. How does it work? So primarily tax groups can be formed with entities where the parent company holds 95% or more of the shareholding, okay? And in a tax group, you cannot include the exempt entities or free zone entities with 0% corporate tax, obviously, because these entities are already kind of, you know, not within the domain and 
you know this could have an overall impact of possibly reducing the value of income that is there when you include the exempt or free zone free zone entities okay and the other requirement is that all the tax group members must use the same financial year now when we talk about uh, tax credits uh, as we have seen the concept is that ue entities are liable for global income okay uh, in terms of on their uh, sorry for the corporate tax purposes okay but however you know basically to avoid the double taxation they also provide for a credit to be given you know for any taxes which are paid in a foreign jurisdiction right and there is a basically a limit of saying that it would be the lower of what the tax is paid in the foreign jurisdictions or the tax table uh, the local uh, uae corporate tax so effectively what we are saying is that the maximum that you can claim is 9% okay and in, in case of the foreign tax credit it is basically not allowed to be carried forward or you know back to any other tax period so it is basically if there is a specific tax period in which you have a foreign tax paid then that would basically be allowed to be set off in that particular financial year okay obviously this will base provide entities the benefit of claiming you know any kind of foreign tax that they are incurring you know, in terms of their outside operations per se right so that's some benefit that will come about now with the corporate tax coming you know there is also the transfer pricing compliance which is getting introduced in uh, ue so which is uh, basically going to govern the uh, related parties and connected persons as such yeah so let's see what is what are these concepts around related party and connected persons so primarily uh, the definition which is being used in the ue corporate tax for related parties is uh where two or more individuals they are related to the fourth degree of kinship or affiliation okay and where in terms of uh, you know shareholding percentage you know where more than 50% 50% or control is exercised over the entities right a taxpayer and his branch okay partners in the same in unincorporated partnership okay exempt and non exempt tax business activities of the same person so all these criteria would be used to basically uh, understand related parties right similarly uh, these are the first one is more about entities connected person is more about individuals okay so any individual who directly as an ownership interest directly or indirectly then he would also be a connected person director officer of the taxable person okay an individual related to the owner director or officer up to the fourth degree of kinship or affiliation right so these are the criteria under which you could basically come under a connected person so what is the implication that if there are these related parties or connected persons okay then if such a case then we would be expected to comply with the transfer pricing guidelines i think very simply put is that any kind of dealings with these entities would have to be an arms length and would be basically in terms of whatever the market prices are there are we charging the same prices in terms of related party transactions is what this would come in so and in this domain i think because i've had conversations where people are saying that we'll show salaries and we'll show the you know basically that professional fees and stuff so all this would come under the transfer pricing guidelines if they are related parties okay so basically also it would be requirement would be there of maintaining proper documentation to to justify that the pricing which is deployed is an arms length pricing okay so like we see on the transfer pricing yes uh, the positive here is that unlike some gcc jurisdictions i think uh, they have not put a ban on related party transactions per se as a dis or a disallowance however uh, basically there is the you know there is the need for us to demonstrate that these are you know following the transfer pricing guidelines as such okay also now withholding tax in terms of you know i, I think in the regime that has been introduced like i mentioned it is kind of a soft launch right on the corporate tax front and one of the you know one of the positives has been that there is no 
uh, withholding tax applicability and uh, basically it is at 0%, right? So which are the income which are subject to 0% withholding tax? So where, you know, the UAE sourced is earned by a foreign company and which is not attributable to a permanent establishment of the company in UAE, right? If you have a mainland sourced income earned by a free zone, which the benefits from a 0%, right? So in that case also, it will not be liable for, you know, the withholding tax on the dividend that is paid as such. Similarly, the dividends and other profits distribution by free zone entity, right? Who are benefiting from a zero tax uh, regime. So even those are not expected to, there is no withholding tax when the dividends are remitted to outside the country, right? And the positive is that as far as the UE business on the withholding tax, there is no requirement to make any deductions. Similarly, there is no obligation to file any withholding tax uh, returns. So uh, what we can basically see that this is a soft land where you know, withholding tax is not really applicable. However, you know, the entity would be expected to keep the documentation in their books to indicate, uh, you know, the how the withholding, how the, these incomes are being distributed. And also, interestingly, currently it is zero percent and a future change in terms of the withholding tax is not ruled out. Now, when we talk of the compliance regime, Right. So similar to that, you know, the uh, the authority is the same federal tax authority and the entities would be expected to register and obtain a tax registration number. Uh, this, I presume, would be separate from the VAT registration number, but it remains to be seen. Uh, basically, you know, if the FTA can also choose to register the entity and if the business is not active, then you are supposed to kind of you know, not active, sorry, which are not subject to the corporate tax, it falls within the, below the limit or the liquidation happens, then you are expected to deregister from corporate tax also within three months from the date of the uh, cessation. Right, and as we have seen in the VAT regime, if the deregistrations are not done on time, then we would be subject to penalties Now, when we talk about the filing, unlike the VAT regime, where it is either a monthly or a quarterly filing, what we are talking about is an annual filing, okay? And basically, the uh, you need to do one uh, tax return filing, right? There is no requirement for a provisional corporate tax return or an advance payment, okay? And the timeline for this filing is nine months from the end of the relevant tax period. Similarly, the payments have to be made within nine months of the uh, tax period ending. And if there is a refund, then you would basically apply to the uh, FT and get the refund for whatever is the due amount. I think on the assessments, it is uh, pretty similar uh, as we have seen in the VAT regime where Initially, it will be a self-assessment. Uh, the business is responsible for the accuracy of what it submits, right? And now, uh, like we are seeing in the VAT context, there is now possibly the FTA-related audits or, you know, basically whenever you're going for refunds, FTA asks additional details. Similar would be expected in the corporate tax regime. So it's all about, you know, how the businesses are basically maintaining the discipline because it might appear easier in terms of the filing process. However, it's very important that all kinds of documentation are retained along with the filing as and when we do the filing. So that subsequently these queries which come, and as we have seen that these queries could come after two years, three years, four years, and effectively like in the VAT, there was a time frame of six years provided where they could assess it. Yeah, similar periods would be expected for corporate tax. So what this would mean is that the entities are maintaining proper records when they are filing and not a subsequent exercise to kind of try and find the record, which can always be difficult. And this is what I highlighted about documentation to be maintained. Uh, the 
the another element is that when you are talking about you know that we are exempt i think there is a requirement to maintain proper records to ensure that you are not falling within the threshold of corporate tax okay audits are going to kind of effectively becoming mandate uh, sorry becoming uh, necessary right because uh, i think the for you to prove at any point of time that whatever is reflected in your financial statements is accurate it's always helps to get an independent auditors certificate on this right uh, the also for the you know in, when you talk about the free zone there is a requirement for audits to be conducted as far as mainland entities uh, the basically the legislation or the public consultation document talks about the respective authority licensing authority uh, whatever you know their provisions are for the audit that will be followed on the transitional provisions currently it appears to be fairly simple in the least in the public consultation document where it talks about the closing balance sheet of you know for the financial reporting purposes would be considered as the opening balances right uh, so there isn't any specific requirement to restate balance sheet as such which is required okay we will do a simple calculation of how the corporate tax uh, you know basically calculation will work okay so we have taken an example that and this is basically the indirect method where we are considering what is the net profit which is shown as per the profit and loss account of the company as such yeah because all entities generally maintain books of accounts and there would be a pnl generated at the end of the year so in this example the pnl is supposedly 1 million okay now uh, you know you have exempted income like dividends and capital gains which are there so you can deduct that 200000 which you have got from there okay there is these certain elements of allowed expenses you know so those also you know additional depreciation and stuff that you can deduct uh, possibly you know certain expenses are not allowed like we have seen if there are any personal related expenses or whether there is entertainment like we have seen a 50% so presume that if that kind of expenses were 100000 so that would be added back so the income that would be subject to corporate tax is basically 850000 okay and we have done the tax calculation at the initial 375000 no tax and balance 475000 at 9% so the tax works out to 42750 now from this if there were any foreign tax which were paid okay so like based on the restriction of lower of what we paid there or 9% so that is allowed to be uh, basically deducted so what will happen in this case is that you know the net tax which is payable is 32000 750 yeah for this entity okay now we come to the topic of the free zone taxability okay so so the basic underlying part is you know free zones are basically within the scope of ue corporate tax okay and you would be expected to do the tax filing right so these are two basic elements now and the third part of it is it will be subject to 0% okay and what is it subject to 0% will be highlighted little later but these are the basic principles as far as uh, free zone entities are concerned that they are within the scope okay they would be subject to tax return and the rate would apply as 0% you know based on the income generation so let us look at little more detail what is it that for free zone that is applicable okay now in the cases where the free zone can avail a 0% corporate tax is where the income is on for transactions from business located outside the free zone which means that if you are dealing with entities outside sorry outside the uae uh, so that income is basically qualifying for being exempt from you know not exempt at being taxed at 0% similarly where there is an income which is generated from you know entities within the same free zone or you know other free zones that would also qualify for the 0% corporate tax and there is a specific one for 
regulated financial services where it is based on the income is generated from foreign markets that will be at the zero percent. So, in nutshell, businesses conducted outside UE or businesses conducted within the same or, or rather, let us say within free zones, these would qualify for a zero percent corporate tax. Of course, there is a a uh, little bit of uh, kind of other specifics of that. Let's look at that. So when we talk about now the free zone and mainland transactions, and this is the this is the hot topic, right? Now, if there is a free zone entity and it has got a mainland branch, then in that case, the free zone entity will be charged at zero percent on the free zone transactions. And on the mainland transaction, it will be charged a regular corporate tax of 9%. Okay. Now, suppose if there is a free zone entity which does not have a mainland branch, okay, and it is basically generating only passive mainland income, right, through the form of interest, royalties, dividends, and capital gains, then also that free zone entity will be charged at 0%. Yeah, because the day, the, the, the basic is on the Passive, passive mainland income. And there is this definition of what is passive mainland income. Okay. The third category is where if you are saying that you are a free zone within a designated zone, and uh, my understanding is Umal Queen free zone qualifies as a designated zone. Okay. Now, if you are having mainland transaction, right, which means you're dealing with mainland entities, it will be charged at 0% provided the mainland entity is the importer on record for the goods imported to mainland. Now, this is specific on only the goods part of it, right? So, if the uh, entity is supplying to the mainland and the mainland entity is the importer on record, then in that case also, the income which is generated by that, you know, the designated zone entity will be at 0%. Okay, and I think we understand this import or a record even in the VAT context. So again, it depends on your uh, terms of the sale as such, but primarily what is this is talking about is the custom related import or on record, right? The other category is where if a free zone entity will be, you know, continue to charge at 0% on group learned mainland transactions provided the mainland entity, the payment which is made by the mainland is not deducted in the mainland, which sounds little, you know, difficult in terms of, you know, taking that on board, okay? But we'll have to see how this finally translates in the uh, legislations, okay? What it talks is other than the about defined circumstances, okay, if a free zone entity is deriving mainland income, then it would need to pay 9% on the total income, okay? So there are specific cases defined like we have seen in the uh, basically in the four points earlier, right? Those specific cases, the 0% entitlement continues on the mainland income. Other than that, it would be basically that if you're deriving income from mainland, you would be charged at 9% on your total income. So what what is the conclusions? Okay, uh, basically, you know, uh, what it would mean is that as far as free zone entities are concerned, you need to analyze your transactions as to where are your transactions? Are your transactions primarily in the, in the mainland or they are in within the free zone or they are outside the country? Because based on that is where your corporate tax liability will get determined, okay? And also what is the structure? Is it a branch or is it a group related? What kind of structure are we following, okay? The other part is to you know kind of look at if we are talking about trading of goods, which is supplying of goods, okay, are you in the designated zone entity? Yeah, because designated zone has got certain you know preferences or certain concessions, primarily from a perspective of if the mainland entity is the imported on record, right? What it also means is that as far as the free zone entities are concerned, you know, you would have to register and you would have to file returns. Also, one more condition which is there is that there would need to be audit of the financial statements where the free zone entity is going to claim 0% corporate tax rate. So these are in nutshell the conclusions around the uh, free zone taxability. 
we move to the last part of our presentation where we talk about how do we basically prepare for uh, the corporate tax regime you know generally we see the refrain that saying that no no it's still far away you know there is nothing uh, clarity i think at least our uh, premise is that you know basically based on the kind of currently the regulations or currently the clarity you know it's something that we basically need to prepare and we'll talk in little detail in the subsequent slides right so generally in terms of you know these are the common questions why bother now you know what is the key risk to avoid okay how do we go about it and the implementation phases let's take it one by one okay why bother now obviously when we talk about the direct tax regime we all have not been exposed to direct tax in this part of the world right when you look at accounting practices auditing practices they are varied right and now with the corporate tax you know coming in there would be a greater amount of discipline which needs to be exercised as far as the accounting is concerned and also from an auditing perspective so this is something that the change that we need to possibly look at in the way we are managing our business right i think more importantly is when we talk about and as we have mentioned there is an impact on the bottom line so that's where we possibly need to evaluate what is the bottom line impact is there any pricing related changes okay what is the cash flow related impact that we need to do and the like we have been repeatedly saying the now the discipline on recording and documentation needs to be enhanced the other aspect of it why we need to bother now is also looking at it from a structuring perspective because when you talk about now the your transactions and as we have seen the implications in context of the free zone primarily from a perspective of mainland within the free zone and outside transactions so there is an element of looking at it whether the structure that we are operating is currently right or not and that's the reason where that thought process needs to start now okay and what the key is that we should avoid you know that we are not having enough time okay that we do not understand the legislations and as we have seen in the vat regime that some of the organizations where they pleaded ignorance i think the element is they have to pay in terms of their price for that in terms of penalties and stuff okay even similarly about the tax treatment of transactions if we do not understand it then there could be some implications of cost and penalties and whether the how we are you know how our transactions recording system and accounting now generally we, when we talk about any implementation it is on the four pillars so what are the pillars obviously the structure structure in this case is referring to the organization okay is there any kind of system changes that we need to do you know primarily because of the corporate tax right because there might be certain things that we are not capturing and those need to be kind of you know captured now similarly what is our transaction flow and how do we manage it and the last part of it is about the training and communication you know whether all the people in our organization are aware as to what is the implications and how do we manage the corporate tax so that we don't make commitments where effectively that becomes a cost to the business right in our context we have just drafted a corporate tax implementation journey okay obviously we are talking of this is the stage where you do a preliminary impact assessment which is like they say looking at the entire landscape and seeing where all the impact is likely to come through okay the second is once the legislations are out that's where we would suggest to go in for a detailed impact assessment on your business right and the for organizations where it's applicable from 1st june 2023 in those cases then they need to plan their implementation phase to put across all the changes that you are required to do before the implementation of the corporate tax and post june 2023 is where you basically prepare for the return filing and compliance phase right so largely and this i'll just cover quickly in terms of when you talk about preliminary impact assessment there are basically five or six key areas where we talk about the structure grouping tax applicability okay looking at intra and inter group transactions okay any kind of management related transactions where you have the salaries management fees these terms to be looked at okay what is the impact on the bottom line 
So these are what you do in the preliminary. And in the detail, you would like you would, once the legislations are out, all these areas will have to be looked at in little more detail. Okay, including possibly where the second point about the, you know, also the reconciliation with the government, uh, you know, records, right? Because uh, one of the things is two records are, or rather three records are currently in the, with the government. One is in terms of whatever the imports are being done by the, organi by the organization, right? Second is in terms of the salaries that are currently being paid are also, you know, part of the wage protection system in some places. Okay, so that also basically needs to be looked at. And the third part of it is the VAT related submissions that have been doing, we have been doing. So these are all their assets. So obviously we have to ensure that when we talk of our books or accounts, they're all tied into what have already been submitted with the government records. In the implementation phase, the similar what we spoke about the key elements of it, those have to be looked at. Okay, obviously here the element, additional element is in terms of registering for the corporate tax. And in the return filing, it's about again the, you know, ensuring the accounting, doing the various reconciliation, competition, and the filing of the corporate tax returns. Right, with that, I come to the end of my presentation. Yes, Sam. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Girish. Thank you very much. Um, now, I have some few questions that was raised by our uh, audiences. Uh, you spoke about the effective date for corporate tax applicability based on the financial year. Which documents would be the basis for uh, determining the financial year of a company? So, uh, largely, when you look at it, if the entities are already, you know, getting audited, so then in that case, the audited financials would be something which would form the basis. Yeah, because that would again be with reference to the memorandum of association and stuff. Where the companies are not getting audited, then it is basically coming back to the uh, MOAs where, you know, possibly if the entity has specified the uh, financial year. If it is not specified the financial year, then yeah, maybe they need to kind of make the necessary amendments to, you know, document their financial year. Okay. Uh, another question, what is your advice for free zone entities to better manage their uh, corporate tax liability? So like I mentioned in the presentation, so I think the first step is basically analyze the transactions that you're currently doing, right? And as we have seen, there is a different, uh, you know, kind of rates which are applicable based on your transactions, okay? So I would say at this stage is first to analyze what are the types of transactions that we are doing, okay? And then to structure the entities wherever possible according to the type of transactions that you're doing. Okay, great. Uh, third question here, uh, free zone entities not having any income from mainland entities are subject to 0%. Uh, are they required to perform any corporate tax compliance? Yeah, so like, you know, just by you not doing any mainland transaction, you don't qualify for it. So obviously in that context, you know, A, you would have to register, okay, you would have to do the return filing and if you are saying that you are having or you are claiming 0% corporate tax, then you would be required to audit those financials. Okay. Uh, last question here is, uh, are tax groups the same under uh, corporate tax and VAT? No, there is uh, differences between the two. Okay. Uh, now, when you talk about VAT, uh, primarily what would happen is that entities which are having 50% or more control, right, or shareholdings, they would qualify for, you know, the VAT group as such. However, when you talk about uh, tax group, I think they, uh, on the corporate tax group, they have, you know, kind of put in higher limits there. 
So in this context, it is about 95% is what is currently specified. Okay, we need to look at the uh, legislation because 95% seems to be high limit. So we'll have to see whether it still stays at 95%. Okay, great. Um, any further questions here from the audience? Uh, Sam, I will uh, run through the questions and maybe answer them. No problem, sir. okay. Yeah. So, and I think uh, better is I've seen some hands getting raised. If people can put their questions in much easier so that we can, you know, manage the Q&A better. Okay, so we have a question here from uh, Abdul Aziz Anis. He's asking is if the business is online sales in Europe and he buys from Bangladesh and is transferred directly to Europe. Okay, and nothing comes to UAE and my company is based in Dubai. Online with Dubai Bank, we'll have to pay, right? I think the element uh, here is that, you know, effectively the, question, the key question is whether the entity is registered in the free zone or not. You know, if the entity is registered in the free zone, then this business which he's talking about would be a business which is conducted outside the UAE. And, uh, you know, that, you know, basically the entity in the free zone would qualify for a 0% uh, corporate tax. Okay. Now, uh, basically the, I think the, there is a question about the residential status for a uh, natural person. Right. I think the uh, definition, which I think this question is asked by Zubair Babar, right? The natural person currently, which is being put in, is about individuals that are uh, having a uh, register or which are required to have businesses, uh, which are uh, primarily uh, requiring a license. Right. So that is the criteria for the residential uh, status for natural person. Okay, uh, we we will have to see whether the TRC part of it also comes into play. But right now they have mentioned is that as far as individuals are concerned, where they require a license to operate any businesses, then those are the ones which are liable for taxation. And those are the ones coming under the definition of natural person. Okay, uh, we have quite a few anonymous entity. First, I will take the people who are given their name, Rovena Bravo. Okay, uh, the question is, do we require to register in VAT since we have corporate tax? These are two separate uh, criteria and uh, primarily at least my initial guess is that if you are liable for corporate tax, you would definitely be liable for VAT uh, depending upon your business, right? Uh, right, because uh, when we talk about VAT, the limit is the turnover limit, and that is 375,000. Whereas when you talk about corporate tax, it's on the profit, which is the net element of it. Okay, so if your business is liable for VAT related transactions, yes, you would have to register for VAT. Okay, Rowana is talking about you're buying outside UAE and selling our materials to other countries outside UAE, are we exempted from corporate tax, right? Again, the element is, if it is a free zone and you what you describe the business, then in that case, it would be 0% corporate tax. I think Alexia has asked about proper financial records. Okay, uh, audited financials, if yes, IFRS will be used. So basically they have said about generally accepted accounting uh, policies. Okay, so IFRS, yes, it is, IFRS is one of them, but it is not restricted only to IFRS. Yeah, I think Victor has asked for the presentation. I think uh, basically uh, with the Umar Queen free zone, we possibly could arrange if it allow, if they is allowed by them, the recording of the webinar would be shared. Andrea Kilmenko, uh, Andre Kilmenko. I think uh, he's asked free zone and companies zero percent provided. Maintain, entities maintain adequate substance and comply with all the requirements. What are the exact substance requirements? Most UAP has 
so this does how to fulfill this requirement what are the other regulatory uh, requirements okay so i think this has been under the esr definition you know certain you know criteria have been specified for the uh, substance related requirement and uh, andre we can talk separately i think at the end maybe here on the screen you can see our you know email and we can talk further on this okay, there is one question please clarify whether it is necessary to pay a corporate tax to an it company that is registered in free zone and provide services to companies outside the ua again if the business is basically services which are provided to outside uae and if you are in the free zone then you will be subjected to 0% okay there is rajkumar patel he is talking about if the free zone is generating revenue only from mainland then what is your advice in regards to continue the business from free zone or move to mainland okay normally on the webinars we don't give advice i think uh, rajkumar uh, like i mentioned you would have, you'll have to analyze is uh, your business and then take the according structure requirement so since based on a question we cannot give i think your address is provided rajkumar we can talk further on that okay there is one question i am a single owner with 100% ownership registered in north and free zone should i start preparing financial statement booking and submitting to fpa every year yes i think as we mentioned the free zone related requirement is uh, if you are claiming the 0% Uh, corporate tax rate then the then there is a requirement for the bookkeeping and the uh, auditing to be done because you would need to prove to fta that you are you know qualifying for the 0% corporate tax so there is one question we free zone entity having no bank account and operating fully out of ue audit of a financial from a non ue auditor would be acceptable uh at least my initial answer would be that it might not be acceptable because we are talking about you being registered in ue so obviously the audit would have to be done from from a recognized auditor in ue there's one question all the free zone entities must comply the audited financial report submission if they're not involved in doing business in gcc to show the 0% corporate tax to the fta i think the maybe is talking about not involved in doing business in gcc means outside gcc i think the if like we have spoken about if you want to avail the 0% corporate tax you would be expected to get the audits done there's a question what is the importer or account in mainland in connection with free zone uh this is from mohammed yusuf i think this is basically whenever the goods are being imported from the free zone into the mainland in the customs you know you have the document of import from you know import to local right in that you know the you record the mainland entity as the importer right so that is what is referred to as the importer on record Okay, there is a question from Someshwar Patel about invoicing of five hundred thousand with mainland entities and five hundred thousand was with overseas and designated non designated zone stroke free zone companies. How can we account for profit and calculate tax? Okay, Someshwar Patel, if you qualify in the last category, okay, right where you are having mainland transactions and also. you know within the free zone and outside okay as per the current public consultation document it is basically talking about a, a 9% rate applicable to all the transactions ashok ganwani we are registered company in numal coin buying and selling outside ue that means 0% tax yes if your transactions are 
basically related to outside UAE, you would be subjected to a 0% corporate tax. Okay, there's a question interesting. I think I'm taking a few of these questions which are having different facets so that everybody gets an understanding. Uh, if a company is you know, facing loss around 200K, how many years allowed to recover the loss? This is from Ishwar Bugatti. So as per the, uh, you know, the norms, currently there isn't a timeline defined and they have used the principle that, you know, the tax is payable over the life of the entity. So by that principle, I think the, there is no definition for, you know, how many years you can recover the, uh, the losses. Okay. However, we'll have to wait for the legislation for the exact thing to be defined. Okay, so where Babur, there is corporate taxes, zero percent entities required to include note to financial statements. Okay, these things will get clarified in due course of time. When do we need to apply for corporate tax registration? I think this again will be in basically in 2023. There will once the legislation comes out, the clarity will come about how the process of applying for corporate taxes comes. I think there's a question who is a recognized auditor in UAE, which entity is recognized by the FTA. So primarily on the auditor perspective, already the Ministry of uh, basically the finance is already kind of, you know, there is a licensed auditor specified. Okay, I think I have answered most of them, and I don't think so. Answered all, uh, Sam. But if there are any more questions, uh, Sam, I think we can please feel free. I think uh, already on the chat box we would have specified our, you know, the address where you can email address where you can get in touch with us. Yeah, over to you, Sam. Yeah, yeah that's right. So uh, yeah, I think we covered. I mean, you, you covered all the, uh, the questions here. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Girish, for such an informative presentation uh, that really helps in understanding and learning more about the upcoming uh, UAE corporate tax. I also would like to thank our audience for attending this webinar. Uh, feel free to, to, to send your uh, uh, questions to uh, the email um uh, mca tax at mca gulf.com and uh, thank you very very much thank you mr girish thank you so much sam it's always a pleasure to associate with you much confusion thank you sir thank you very much bye bye